is here Wrestling Observer Live, Mike Sempervivi, also WrestlingObserver.com. Raw last night, I thought this show sucked. Mm-hmm. I don't know about the rest of you. I mean, there was some did. There was some good wrestling on the show, like the Matt Riddle Sheamus match was good, and what else was good? Keith Lee actually got to beat somebody. That was good. Hurt Business Retribution. They put in some time. Drew squashed Miz practically. I mean, how can you complain about that? But the issue is just the booking is absolutely atrocious. I mean, absolutely atrocious. I mean, I talked yesterday about how 10 years ago, Randy Orton was the champion and Miz had the money in the bank. And now it's 2020 and Randy Orton is a champion. And I love Randy Orton, but it's 2020 and Randy Orton is a champion and Miz has the money in the bank. And we're probably building towards Randy Orton and Edge, which, I mean, that feud is from over well over a decade ago. So all I ask is, can we can we elevate somebody? And after a long discussion with Dave on Observer Radio last night, it did suddenly strike me that they have actually elevated somebody. His name is Drew McIntyre. Now, of course, Drew McIntyre is like 36 years old, and he also has been there for well over a decade. But at least somebody was moved into the main event mix that had not been there before. But that's it. And as I look at the show here, and I look at all of the different opportunities where they could have elevated somebody new, it's just the same old thing. Sheamus beats Matt Riddle. Lana is going into the the Survivor Series 5 versus 5 women's match. Why, why is Mia Yim not in there? I mean, Mia Yim is... She's new on the roster. She's better than Lana. She would be a better worker. She's a new face on the show. But no, we got we to gotta throw Lana in there, who they apparently are trying to make into a baby face. I have no idea how. And I don't know. I just thought this show was just a booking nightmare. It's the same old stuff. I guess if you're a new fan and you haven't seen all this stuff 85 times, it's new to you. So, congratulations. I mean, they're all new faces to you. But for anybody that's been watching for any length of time, it's the same old thing over and over again. That's all I got to say for the moment. I mean, it's nice that you give them credit for Drew, and they do deserve credit for protecting Drew. But, my, you know, if there's not an issue with Matt Riddle... <laughs> What's the deal? Because you need more than just one person at the top. You need levels to these people. And you bring over Matt Riddle. He already looks like a geek last week in the way that he lost to AJ Styles, being intimidated by the bodyguard. Former UFC fighter, intimidated by the bodyguard. Sees a fist, then just takes a flat back bump to to get away from it insane so okay you can do some redemption this week have him go out there and fine if you don't want him to beat Sheamus but then have it go to some sort of schmoz finish have it be a double DQ have both guys disqualified for kicking too much ass do something to solidify Matt Riddle in a position where hey you know maybe he's not in Vince's eyes a world champion but we can get something out of this guy he can be a secondary guy we can build him to do something maybe no, goes and loses clean. Great, good match. I mean, can't say it wasn't a good match. He's the perfect guy to have Sheamus in there with. Two guys just slamming into each other, but Sheamus goes over. And there were people that were like theorizing about, oh, well, is this because of something with uh, outside of the ring? Is this no? If that's the case, then Matt Riddle either shouldn't be on TV or wouldn't be on TV. That's the whole point. Let me that's stop it. you for a moment, okay? Go ahead. Matt Riddle is far from the only person that's been accused of anything in WWE, okay? And look at what they did to various other people besides Matt Riddle. I mean, we had people fired. We had people that vanished for weeks and months. Matt Riddle, I don't know. I have no idea if Matt Riddle is guilty of what he has been accused of. I don't know. But let me tell you what I know 100%. WWE believes him because if they didn't, he wouldn't be on television. So the idea that the reason that Sheamus beat Matt Riddle is because of what's going on with Matt Riddle outside of WWE. No, if that were an issue, he wouldn't even be on television. 
They are behind him in his outside of the WWE experiences, whatever you want to call it. That's why he's on television. The booking is something totally, totally separate from that. That's exactly right. And that's the biggest thing is in Vince's mind, he's given this guy a hurdle. He's given this guy a, a proving ground to get over on whatever it is in their mind that they think they're doing with Matt Riddle. What are you doing? Again, I can see perfectly. I'm old. I can see why you would say, you know what? Drew McIntyre and and Matt Riddle, I see Drew McIntyre as my champion. Uh, would you put Steve Austin, The Rock, Hulk Hogan, whatever? Yeah, I can see where you wouldn't. But you have such a dearth of stars. You need to build them up on all sorts of different levels, you know, and you don't. And there was a great example of it last night. There were lots of, of problems. You, you, you go with Retribution and Survivor in, in uh, the Hurt Business for this long. You have Survivor Series coming up. It's a perfect place to do whatever it is that you want to do to get rid of this feud. And they do it last night. And, and on top of that, you have Bobby Lashley, who's going to be involved in a match against Sami Zayn because, of course, we're going to have a bunch of interpromotional matches because this is the only time of year where it happens. I mean, just completely ridiculous. And the show was interminably long. The When the first hour was just getting over with and we were in the Firefly Funhouse, you know, it was really going to be downhill. And I don't know. I know that Bray Wyatt and I know that the whole Wyatt family thing and the Firefly Funhouse has got its supporters. And I, I can't say that I've hated some of the things that Bray Wyatt has been involved in. But, like, you know, it's been all downhill, frankly, and I know how much you hated WrestleMania and the Cena match. In my opinion, that's the high watermark of Bray Wyatt coming back. That's still the best thing that he has been involved in and that he's been in. And now we're going to have to see him inserted into Randy Orton and Drew McIntyre, probably a one-on-one -on -one with Randy Orton at some point. And that just brings back a lot of memories to a couple years ago where they had a line of really craptastic matches. Let me tell you something. In my opinion, the best thing that Bray Wyatt's done this year is his match with Kevin Owens, where there was no Good supernatural point. stupidity. Too they tough. went in there, and they beat the hell out of each other, and they threw each other all over the ring, and it was great. And if Bray Wyatt worked like that, I wouldn't have a problem with him. But it's got to be all of the hocus pocus and the magic. By He's the way, Jimmy Valiant, he needs. He, look at this point. Jimmy Valiant wasn't fighting for the world titles on he a regular is, basis in a perennial main eventer. But that's the problem. Is when you look at it initially, when Jimmy Valiant, I know I'm old, started feuding with Ivan Koloff as the House of Humperdinck, and then that went to Paul Jones, and there was Superstar Graham. There was the assassin. There were these big guys, historical guys that Jimmy Valiant was bumping up against in his battles, and then it became. Shaska Watley, the Zambui Express, you know, this person, that person, a bunch, and then the bald-headed geeks, and that it was nonsense. And that's frankly what Bray Wyatt is. He's a character, he's a wacky character, and I don't want him anywhere near my title picture at this point. He doesn't have good matches with people, he's better with smoke and mirrors, and if anybody could benefit from cinematic presentations, it's him. Keep him out of the main mix and things, and make him just the entertainment portion of your proceedings, because... I I just, there are more people, I think, like me, I don't hate the guy, any of that stuff, but on a regular basis, what he does doesn't work, and I cringe when I start seeing him in a world title picture that they've done a pretty good job taking care of.